Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we're going to be covering hypothesis tests about a proportion. Um, and in this problem, we see we have the standard treatment for a disease works in 55% of all patients. A new treatment is proposed, which the scientists who created it claim it is better. In their initial trials, 48 out of 48 of their 81 trials were cured of the disease. Assume the selection of patients were random. Test the claim that the new treatment is better at an alpha level of 0 0.05 significance level, right? And so before we begin this problem, what we want to do is we want to analyze a few things. The first of the two, two things we want to analyze is whether or not we can run a proportion hypothesis test on this. And to test that, what we want to do is we want to check our n times p and our n times q and make sure these are greater or equal to 5. So here we see that our n is the number of trials we have, and there are 81 trials. So here we're going to have 81, and the 81 is going to be multiplied by the probability, which is our p, and in that case it's the 55% of cured patients from the disease, right? And so we're doing 55% times 81, and that becomes 0 0.55 times 81, and here what we're going to get when we multiply this is 44.55. And we're also going to check Q, as this seems to be uh, fair since it's greater or equal to 5. What we want to do is then check to make sure this is greater or equal to 5. So what we're going to get is 81 times the complement of P, which is Q, and that's going to be 1 minus P. And we have 1 minus 0 0.55, which is 0 0.45. And so we're using that 0 0.45 to multiply against the 81, the P. And this is then going to become 36. 45. So this satisfies both conditions, which means we can run the hypothesis test for the true proportions, all right? And now what we'll do is we'll re revert back to get into our work here. Now, as we already know a few notes here, we're just going to make a few notes of the things we know. We know n is 81. We also know our p is 0 0.55. We also know that our Q is 0 0.45 from the calculation I just made. And we also know that the number of successful trials were 48. So that makes our X equal 48. We also have our alpha level of significance is 0 0.05. And this represents the area of the critical region, uh, the, the area of the tail of the critical region. So there's a few things we'll have to do before we can get to using this data. As we see, we've gotten it all from this chart already. Now, a few things we want to focus on, uh, like the first thing we want to focus on is the claim. And here we see that the standard treatment for a disease works in 55% of all patients. The new treatment that is proposed is part of the claim. And so the new treatment is what we want to use as the claim. Now, before we make a claim for our null and alternative hypothesis, there's a useful chart that I like to use that helps us understand how we develop our null and alternative hypothesis based on a claim. And in this case, we know that the scientists are claiming that their creation works better than the 55% that is the standard for the treatment in the disease. So the, they're saying that theirs works greater than 55%. So this means they're claiming that their probability of getting this better is going to be better than 55%, which this translates into P being greater than 0 0.55. And what we do to get a null and alternative hypothesis is take a claim and match it to the start to determine what our null and alternative hypothesis are. And there, there are three possibilities of the way this turns out. And the first of those possibilities are if we have an equality, we always consider everything with equality to be a, a null hypothesis, while the inequalities are considered to be alternative hypotheses. So if some claim has equality, the counterargument to equality is no equality. Right? In the case of what we see here, when there's a claim with a greater than symbol, this is an inequality, and so that becomes an alternative hypothesis. And the counterargument of a greater than is less than or equal to. And the final claim that we can have can either be a greater than or equal to or a less than, which is more likely the case 
for having a less than. And so the counter argument to this is greater or equal to. And these work back and forth any which way. In our case, we have a claim with a greater than symbol. So we know that this represents an alternative hypothesis. So our first case, our first step here in this problem is to identify both the null, which is identified by h subscript 0, and our alternative, which is h subscript a, or sometimes h subscript 1. Either way is fine, depending on how your, uh, how your instructor runs this. But most, more than likely, it's HA and HO. And so we have our alternative hypothesis here because the inequality tells us on this chart, HA should have this symbol. And we bring that here to the alternative hypothesis with the greater than symbol. And this is 0, 055. And just for remembering, I'm going to write claim right next to the statement. And the alternative hypothesis of greater than is less than or equal to. So we're just going to write that up here. Now, the next important step is to take the time and understand what this is saying. This is identifying with what type of test we're running. And so technically what we want to do is generate sort of a good feel of how this is looking, right? So this is a right tail test because this is aiming to the right. So when we have our hypothesis test labels from alternative hypothesis, which determine the type of test we run, whenever we get a uh, um, a not equal to symbol, this is a two-tailed test. Whenever we have a greater than symbol, this is considered to be a right-tailed test. And whenever it's pointing to the left, you know it's a left-tailed test. In our case, we're going to have a right tail test, meaning the critical region of this problem is going to sit on the right side of everything. So I'm just going to go and put up the chart here. And we know that our critical region is going to be on a single right tail. All right? So I'm just going to leave that there and continue working. Let's continue working with what we're given. So here what we have to develop to do a hypothesis test is one, the test statistic, and also the, the critical region and the critical statistic. And so we're going to get that basically from this critical number right here, the rejection region or the significance level. And we know that this has a 0.05 area in this region. And what we have to do is look on the Z chart and find the corresponding Z value because after we ran the first test on n times p and n times q, we know we can use a Z test statistic for this. And so the critical region with a, a tail of 0.05 is the z-critical value of 1.645. And this is usually given on your formula sheet. So you should take a look at that and find that number associated with this. This also represents the rejection region. Everything from here to the right tells us we reject the null hypothesis. Now the rejection and fail to rejection always corresponds to your h0, not your ha. In this case, we'll be talking about the claim. Rejecting the null hypothesis means we're failing to reject the alternative. And, failing, the, and uh, failing to accept this one means we're accepting the alternative as well. All right? We'll keep that uh, in our minds. Now let's continue to build everything we need. We have our z-critical region. We have our rejection region, our rejection area. What we need now is our test statistic. And we'll see where it lands based on the chart here and to see if it falls before the z-critical value or after. If it falls after, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If it falls before, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And so to begin this, what we're going to do is we're going to develop what we need for the problem. So the next thing we need here is going to be p hat. And to get p hat, we're going to take our x, the successful trials, and divide it by the number of total trials, which is going to be 48 divided by 81. Now, if you're doing this, you're using a calculator, so make sure that you're calculating it you're going to get 0 0.5925. And this number we can round to just two decimal places because we're working with a two decimal system. So our p hat is going to be 0 0.59, our point estimate for this problem. And now we can run our test statistic. Our z test stat is then going to be, the formula is p hat minus the p value divided by the square root of p times q over n. 
Now, more than often, a lot of students get confused at this point. They confuse p hat with p. Try not to do that. Remember that the p you see here for the comparison is the same p and the same q that come from here. And these come from the question, right? You can also find these at the claim. And this also works for when you're doing mean uh, pro uh, hypothesis tests for mean. For large or small samples, you're usually getting your actual mean to subtract from these values. All right? They, they're based on claims. So here we already have everything we need. We have 0 0.59 for our p hat. We have 0 0.55 for p. We're dividing this by the square root of 0 0.55 times 0 0.45 for q divided by 81. And now my best way and suggestion for, you, for doing this work is quite simple. What you want to do is use your calculator for most of it. The top is easy. Do this subtraction first. You get 0 0.04. On the bottom here, it becomes a little bit difficult. And the reason for it is you don't want to round these numbers up, right? You want to run this whole calculation on your calculator. Then take the square root of the solution. You're going to get a repeating decimal number. Now don't wipe off that number. What you want to do with that number is write the next calculation while the number is still stored on your calculator and type in 0 0.04 and divide it by the answer. All right? When you do that, you're going to get the solution to this. Because the, the truth is, these numbers are very careful and specific and you don't want to tamper with the actual numbers that these give you as outputs because every number does make a difference. And the result you should get from this when you divide it is actually going to be a number 0.72 where the rest of these numbers are negligible because I think the next digit is 3 and that's not going to round this 2 up to a, a 3, right? You need the next position to be a 5 or greater for this number to change. So here's our z-test statistic. And what this is saying is our test statistic, this is the z-score value, is falling before the critical value. And here we're going to fail to reject if we land in this region, and our z test statistic falls in the region. So technically, we know we won't reject the null hypothesis. And what we're going to do then is find the p-value associated with the z-score. And remember, when we're getting the area of this value, we have to get it to the tail it's closest to, the zeros behind this. And so we have to find the area to the right of this. To find the area to the right of this, we have to find p of z being greater than 0 0.72. And this is identical to its symmetric component. So instead of looking this up and subtracting 1 minus the left tail of this, we can just consider this being the same as this area, because they're symmetric in values. And when we calculate the z-test statistic, what we're going to get is 0 0.72. 2358. So this is our p value. And now what we do with the p value is we compare the p value to alpha. If your p value is greater than alpha, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. And in our case, the p value is greater than alpha. So we must fail to reject the null hypothesis. And we must reject the claim that the new scientists who created a formula have a better treatment than the standard treatment that already exists. Thank you.